Hello and welcome to another command block tutorial. Today's episode we are going to be using the has item command selector. We're going to be doing various things such as learning how to use it as well as using it to make a shop, to make a basic spell system, and to make a simple world edit so you can build a little bit easier. I'm going to be lingering over each command for a few seconds long enough for you guys to be able to pause it and be able to copy the commands if you want to. Start off, these are a few commands that I'm using. You just need to run them once, and this basically prevents your chat from being spammed if you have command blocks running in the background. So for this first example, we're just going to be using the has item command. We're going to be having has item here with an equal sign, and then whatever is going to be detecting with the has item is going to be in these little brackets here. So we're just going to be checking in the inventory, do you have a gold ingot item? As you can see, as long as I have an ingot in my inventory, this light's going to turn on. doesn't matter where in my inventory it is. We can use this for more than just test for commands. For instance, in this example, we're using detecting an item that is a gold block and using it to give us speed. So as long as I have this gold item, I get speed. In the next, next example, we're going to be checking for an iron ingot, except this time we're going to be checking its location we're going to see if it's in the weapon slot dot weapon dot main hand. This means that you are holding the item in your primary hand whenever you are using this location selector. So as long as I have this iron ingot in my hand, light turns off. If I'm not holding it, light turns off. We can use it for more than test force, like I said. In this example, we're using it to give us speed as long as we have an iron block in our weapon main hand. As you can see, speed while we hold it, as soon as we stop, speed fades away. For the next example, we are going to be able to detect different areas in our inventory. Instead of our weapon main hand, we're going to be checking our hotbar in the 8th slot. An important thing to note is that this is technically slot 0, so this is slot 8. It goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So as long as I have this gold ingot, it doesn't matter where I put it in my hand, it's not going to work anywhere unless it's in this last slot of my hotbar, in which case it's going to turn on. Additionally, instead of the hotbar this time, we're going to be checking in our inventory. It's going to be slot.inventory, and we're going to use slot number zero. That means it's going to be the very first slot in our inventory, right here in this corner. That's going to give us speed. If it's anywhere else in our inventory, it's going to go away. Next thing we're going to be checking is quantity of items. This example, it's currently seeing if I've never an ingot and I have the quantity in a range of two to three. So what some things you can do here is these two periods represent a range. So in this example, I had, can have any number between two and five. So two, three, four, or five. If I have this example, it can be any number that is two or higher than two. In this example, it can be any number that is three or lower than three. However, for now, we're just going to be using two to three. So I need to have another right ingot. I need to have two or three of them in order to trigger this command. So if I have four, it's going to turn off. I have three, so it's going to turn on. Two, it's going to turn on. One, it turns off. Additionally, we can combine these different things. In this example, I'm getting speed. As long as I have another right block in my main hand, and it has a quantity of two or greater. So if I just have one netherite ingot, you see I have no speed. If I have three, because three is greater than two, I still get speed. If I just have two, I still get speed. I only have one, and I'm going to lose that speed. Another thing the has item selector can do is have a data value. This is for certain blocks like different colors of wool. They're all technically wool items, but they have different data values for different colors. Data zero is white wool in this example. So we're going to be checking if we have white wool in our main hand. Now, as you can see, this does in fact work. The issue is, even though we have data selected as zero, and it should only work for white wool, it's also going to work if I'm holding orange wool, which is the data value of one. This is currently bugged in the update I'm recording. However, by the time you're using this video, it may already be fixed. In this example, as you can see, as long as we're holding orange wool, we should get speed. However, this also happens when we are holding white wool. Like I said, this is a known bug. It will hopefully be fixed in a future update. 
That's essentially all that the has item command can do. Now we're going to be moving on to some things you can do with the has item command. So as you can see here, we have a shop that sells diamonds if you have five gold. If I press the button, absolutely nothing's going to happen because I don't have any gold. If I have four gold, which is not enough to buy anything, nothing. If I have five, boom, I get a diamond. If I have more than five, you can see it's going to work. It's going to take away five each time I press this button. Boom, three diamonds. Now, for the first commands, it's going to do an execute a P followed by three tildes. This just makes sure it's multiplayer friendly. If you're in a single player world and you want to do this for whatever reason, you can get rid of it from this point forward from the execute to the tildes and change this to either an A or a P. Now we're going to be checking if you have the item gold ingot with a quantity of five or greater. If you do, it's going to give you a diamond. The following commands is going to do very much the same thing, except instead of giving you a diamond, it's going to clear five golden ingots from your inventory. Uh, this represents that the gold ingot has a value of zero, which is the default for most items. In the next example, we're going to be using a fishing rod as a little thing to kind of act like a spell, where every time I click it, I get a speed boost. The fishing rod is nice because every time you click it, it summons a fishing hook entity. In this example, what we're doing is we have the fishing hook here, and it's going to give an effect to anyone who is holding a fishing rod in their hand who is also within three blocks of that fishing rod, the fishing rod hook. It's going to give them speed. Now in this example we're going to try and get rid of the fishing hook example, the fishing hook entity as soon as we can. So what we're going to do is we're going to teleport it away in the, with this command right here and then we're going to kill it. The reason we are not killing it directly is because uh, a recent Minecraft update made it so when you kill a fishing rod hook, it summons fishing loot directly in front of your face. And since you probably don't want to be annoyed by a bunch of fishing loot coming in front of your face, we're going to teleport it away before we kill it. So I'll show that now. As you can see, I'm holding it in my hand and nothing is happening. As soon as I click it, I get a speed boost. It's going to last for a few seconds and then it fades away. And click again, boom, speed boost. You can do this as many times as you want. If you want, you can also do some other commands, make this do a more complicated system like I've done in some of my realms. This is the basis of how we do it. Uh, the next command is very useful for builders. It essentially allows you to do a type of world edit. It's not as good as normal world edit because uh, you have to kind of adjust the commands every time, but this is, like I said, completely vanilla. There are no add-ons or anything in this. So this is going to check, do you have a wooden axe? Is it in your hand? If that's the case, it's going to do some coordinate stuff to essentially fill stone in front of where you're looking. So if I get a little bit away from the commands, just so I don't break anything, I can just look stone, hold my, hold my axe, wherever I look, it's placing stone. Very useful for building large areas of terrain and other various things you can do with this. So it's very helpful, very nice. And that's about it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments.